What's up, freaks and geeks? Welcome back to Low Res DIY. So, uh, some things have changed with uh, True NAS. You know, they have a new update out, Bluefish. I finally got around to to updating to that, and because of that, uh, True Charts had to change the way that they did a few things, which ultimately means if you update to Bluefish or Fin, whatever it is. You're going to need to reinstall all of your applications and everything. And you're going to notice that some things are deprecated, like uh, OpenVPN. It's deprecated. They're not supporting it anymore. They've changed to Tailscale and to Gluten. So that's what we're going to go through on this video is we're going to show you how to set up Gluten and get you back behind that VPN wall. But uh, we're also going to do a little housekeeping things uh also so if you're not interested in the housekeeping uh steps go ahead and skip to uh that time and uh we'll see you there so the little bit of housekeeping i wanted to go through started a couple weeks ago uh this other youtuber lawrence from lawrence tech pretty good channel i'll throw a link in the description for you and everything so you can check him out he did a video that i i came across while i was up here playing video games and i was half listening half not but he was basically going through talking about how in true nas scale you need to be careful because you don't want to lose your data and he he didn't want people losing their data and I listened to it, but I thought, yeah, that's no big deal. You know, I've set up different Z pools or ZFS pools and different data sets and everything, kept everything separated. So my movies are in a media directory. My torrents are in a torrents directory. My important data is completely on a different uh, ZFS pool uh, and all that. So I thought, okay, I get what he's saying, but yeah, we're good. No big deal. That's what I thought, at least, until I updated from Angel Angelfish, I think it was, to Bluefin. And, like I said in the opener, that IX Systems, they had to do a little bit of uh, IX Systems. They, did a, they, they changed some things in the background there of how the apps operated and, and Kubernetes and everything else, which forced True Charts to change the way they were implementing things also and that's we've been using true, true, true charts the whole time because they just have there's so many apps out there you know we've been using the easy ones getting them set up and all that so you know it was, it, life was good life was good did the update apps were working but i couldn't do updates anymore for the apps you know a new version would come out and i couldn't update to it thought well crap what the hell's going on here looked around i can't remember where i found it at but basically because of the the behind the scenes changes you needed to uh delete your old app and then reinstall it so pretty easy apps you know plex pretty easy to hook up uh sonar radar all that stuff it's pretty easy to set up uh, but and this is where where my mistake came in if we let's have a look here and go into our uh, apps and let's let's look at just we'll just grab anything tail scale so you do an install and then let's scroll down and where is it at now well, let's not use one of theirs let's use one of these guys let's use one of the true charts ones and scroll down to our storage right here on all the videos that i've done up until now and i've done it with every app that i've installed i have just kept it on the pvc option that was a mistake because that is controlled by the data set that true nas scale sets up for itself and when i deleted the old app it deleted everything it deleted any configurations i had made in the app just everything it was gone so i reinstalled it i used the pvc again and it i was starting all over again which is not a big deal like i say for those smaller programs but i had home assistant hooked up to it with a uh, zigbee uh hooked up to it with mqtt and and uh node red and everything and they were all joined together that was no small tasks to 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 fix so what 
we need to do and, I, and hopefully this doesn't screw too many people up you can do this from now on is you want to use this one right here host path and what a host path is is basically a data set that you set up for in my case that specific app so if you look look down here you'll come into mount and then I have my bulk which is my pool then there's data sets and one of the data sets I made is apps and you drill down a little farther and right here I made two more data sets under apps qubit torrent and net data and chose those as my host path now when I install this program I would have made one called a uh, serve to sock as as my uh, host path you know down in here and it would save all your configurations in that host path, not in the I, uh, IX systems uh, data set that you can't do anything with because they got locked down to keep you from doing anything with it. So if I was to go through and install this and then take it back out and then use that same data set again, all my configurations are still there. Everything is still there. So from here on out, we're going to, you know, instead of using PVC, we're going to use the host path. Uh, I definitely want to apologize if that, you know, really screwed anybody up. I, I wasn't thinking about it. I was just, you know, rolling along and life is good type of deal. So there's that that I wanted to talk about. The other thing I wanted to talk about real quick is when you update to Bluefin, Really, the main thing that I've noticed is just kind of your 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 ease of use changes that they made. Everything else is behind the scenes, I guess, that, that we're not going to fool with. But for storage and data sets, they kind of made it a little easier to where you can more readily access some information. You know, you just have to, nothing's changed. It just looks a little different. Look through it and, and play around with it. it. It's actually pretty, pretty nice. Uh once you you have a chance to look at it so okay that's it that's the housekeeping stuff apologize again uh let's go ahead and set gluten up because now if you go into your apps and you set qubit torrent up like we had set up and you go all the way to the bottom this one's already set up we'll go through all these steps but when you would go to your vpn and then your vpn type you would be able to click on that click on this and you can uh could choose open vpn or wireguard but it says they're they're deprecated true charts not supporting them anymore they're changing everything over to gluten and tail scale so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna delete this qubit torrent setup and we're going to reinstall it and we're going to use gluten as our vpn okay finally time for the main event so let's uh do it right let's go to data set and here's our bulk our bulk our apps and then those are the two we had set up already we're going to click on apps and we are going to add a data set so we're going to click on that and we're just going to call it qb2 and we're going to keep everything else the same as our main pool. We're going to save it. Then you'll see right there, it has created it. So let's click on that. And we are going to go over here and edit the permissions for that data set. So let's edit it. We're going to change it to apps. We're going to apply user. We're going to also include the group for write access. Apps. Apply group. Apply permissions recursively. Of course we do. That's why I clicked it. And apply permission to child data sets, which would be any data set underneath the QB2 data set. And we're going to save it. All right. So now we are set up. If you look over here, there you go. Our permissions have changed. Let's go to apps, available applications, and we're going to go to QB. And we're going to install qubit torrent i'm not going to go through every single little thing here just because this is about gluten not qubit torrent i have another video about uh, qubit torrent if you want to check that out 
but I know there's a few things I need to change because I already have an instance of it running. Lord, Lord, Lord. So, and the ports is one of them. So let's change the ports and here we go. Let's, let's do the right thing here. Not PVC, host path. And we are going to drill down until we get to QB2. And we're going to pick QB2. And if you look right there, there you go. There's our host path. So all of our configurations and settings will be saved there. Which, uh, thanks, Lawrence. I wish I would have figured that out prior. And let's go ahead and get gluten rocking and rolling. So VPN disabled. Nope, we want to enable it. Let's click on gluten. And then the uh, first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll set up our kill switch right here. So let's add that. And it is just the main uh, network for your home network. Mine's 192.168.1.04 slash 24. And then, okay, what do we got going on here? Well, if you have a configuration file, you can tell it the location of that. Similar to what I did in the other video. Uh, the other qubit torrent video i did but you'll still have to add some variables so so what am i talking about all right if we go to the true charts uh page for gluten you know it'll give you a little walkthrough of what's going on you gluten you know there's your kill switch right here and the way we're going to set it up is by inputting variables like VPN type they have here and VPN service provider and all this information here. But where do you get that uh, information? Well, they've been kind enough to direct us to the wiki for gluten. And if you go over here, you look up here in the upper right or left corner, uh, QDM12. Quentin McCraw, he put all this together for us, and uh, it's pretty awesome is what it is. So you can read through all of this stuff if you want to, but the things we're interested in right now for this quick little run through is providers right here. He has given us the variables for different providers. Myself, it's private internet access, so I'm going to click on that. And if I scroll down, required environment variables. Now, these three, you're going to have to have them every time. Even if you use a configuration file, you're going to have to have them. We're not going to use a configuration file, so we're going to use some of these optional ones down here. And to be specific, we're going to use the server region, host name, the encryption strength, and the port. And... Uh, Let's show you how we get that going on. We are going to close that. And, all right, kill switch for IPv6. Nope. Configuration. Nope. There were seven in VPN environmental variables. So I want to add seven. One. And you can see here, it's going to want a name and a value. So let's jump back over, and our first thing we want to put in is our provider, VPN service provider. So we're just going to copy everything and paste. We're just going to make it easy, bro. And if we go back, look at that, private internet access. We're going to copy it, and we're going to paste it. And we're just going to go back and forth with this. Copy, paste, and username and then password Oop. copy paste password and scroll a little bit here and we're going to put our server region but What's our region? Where do we find that information out? Well, again, Quentin's a pretty awesome dude, apparently, because if you click on regions, you, you'll come to this table. And up here, we have two columns. One is region, and one is host name, and we're going to use both of those. So I'm in the U.S. 
of A. So I'm going to scroll down to US servers. And I'm going to pick Denver. And we're just going to copy this as our region name. And then we are going to go back to the top and we're going to skip server name because there aren't any. And we're going to pick host name. And then again, we'll scroll all the way down until we get to US Denver and we're going to pick our host name. And oop, I forgot to paste that other thing in there. So there's our host name. Let's go back to the top. And let's pick server host names. Okay, that's better. And then I want it to tell it the strength that I want the encryption to be. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And I'm going to pick normal. Abby normal, normal, whatever you want to be. And we're going to paste normal in there. And then the last thing we want to do is tell it the VP endpoint port. This is the port that will be opened between you and internet access provider. But you can go on the, the interwebs and do a search for whichever provider you have to see which ports they're using. Or you can be lazy like me because I don't, I don't know if it's Quentin or if it was the folks at Choose True Charts there who are freaking awesome. I'm just going to put in 12, which that's not going to work for a port for me. And then I'm going to save it. All right, let's go to installed applications. There is our QB2 and it's trying to deploy. It won't deploy though because it doesn't have the correct port. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the three little dots there. We're going to go to logs and you have a qubit, qub, qubit torrent 2. And if you click on the little arrow there, now you've got a VPN one also. We're going to go into that guy. And da 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 da. Info shut down. Shut down successfully. Well, that does not sound good. So it just it killed itself. Well, the reason it did was because of the ports. If you read this whole line right here and you get to the end look at that they provided you which with the ports that you need to make this work myself i'm just going to pick uh, 1197 because that's what i've always picked it's just that simple so then you want to go back edit scroll all the way down change that 12 to 11 97 and hit save let it go through its steps again all right it's starting to deploy while it's doing that let's go look at the log again and if we scroll down well it looks like something else is going on here what do we have oh you know what it's not going to happen right now because i forgot to put my real password and username in so i'm going to do that off camera of course if i refresh this you know it says it's active but believe me it's it's not active and okay off camera i'm gonna put in my username and password and we're back from that brief commercial break it's starting to deploy again let's go to logs vpn choose and Looks like something might be going on here. <laughs> okay, that's what I wanted to see right there. All right, so what happened was I used 1197 as uh, the port. Well, that's actually associated with the encryption of strong. So I change it from normal to strong, and now it works. And how do I know it works? Because of that guy right there. It says public IP address 3719210188. That is not my public IP address. So I'm going through the VPN now. And if you don't believe me, let's uh, let's take it a step farther, and we'll go into the shell of Qubit Torrent 2, and we'll do a curl, IP config, 
io enter and look at that same ip address so we are now going through the vpn but we're not done yet we want to open this up admin ad, admin admin and uh oops didn't hit that tab there log in to qubit torrent and we want to go into our settings and then advanced and then the interface we want to utilize is the tunnel which is what we just created we hit save and bam just like that you're behind that thin veil and i mean it's a thin veil of anonymity if they really want to punch through that you know it's kind of up to private internet access or whoever you're using to uh they really they need to be hard asses because they're promising you privacy and they need to deliver you're paying for it man so hopefully they they hold up their their end of the bargain so again i want to say sorry for screwing up with the pvn stuff hopefully it doesn't mess everybody else up and uh yeah next up it'll be uh radar which I've had a few people asking about it. I've just been lazy and haven't done anything yet. But the next up will be Radar. And uh, until then, check you later.